One of the biggest problems in Delaware right now is the drug ep epidemic. And I did get a, a resolution through the Senate, and it's in the House now, and it's to form a drug, um, Delaware Youth Drug Prevention uh, Task Force. Okay. And um, I've been trying to gather all the information myself on this, and there's a, something called the Botvin Life Skills Training Program okay. curriculum. And um, this is um, a successful program. It's been in existence for 25 years. It's uh, a lot of the Northeast states are using it now. It has an 80% success rate. Wow. And it's, I'll take that. It's being, it's being uh, right now it's required in Delaware schools, K through 12, okay. that we have some kind of drug prevention program. Right. But right. some of the programs, I looked at the list of the programs. Some of the programs, I'm just, I really question their effectiveness. Right. Um, but Bodfins is proven. It's used in the Boys and Girls Clubs now okay. in Delaware. And uh, we are spending tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, on drug treatment, prisons, and other things because of the drug epidemic. Right. We're going to spend the money either way. We're well, either going to spend it proactively or reactively. We do have a little bit of extra money this year. And okay. one of the things that we were able to uh, to do, which uh, I haven't seen in some time, is you know we're allowed to spend up to 98% of anticipated revenues. This year we decided to, we uh, made the decision to set aside an additional 1%, which is around 47 uh, Forty-eight million dollars. Okay. So, and we have some unfunded liabilities going forward. So, you know, setting aside this amount of money is not that major of a thing, but it's something that should be done. So, it's like a step in in the right direction. It is uh, definitely a step in the right. Is this the direction. first time we've ever done this, or just the first time in a while? Uh, first time that I, uh, yeah, first time that we probably have ever done this. Wow. You know? in a very long time. Yeah. Very long time. Yeah. So it's like. Like, you know, we try to teach our kids to save money. Mm -hmm. So this is something new. In other words, this is we're going to start teaching our government that at least our local government to start pondering what we would teach our kids. If we would prioritize and see where we're spending the most money and make sure that the taxpayers are getting the best deal for that money. I think mm -hmm. that that is uh, something that we really need to pursue. Another thing is, too, that, you know, when there is a shortfall, you know, the default mechanism is to raise taxes. And, you know, I've, I've opposed every tax uh, increase plan that's come uh, in, front of the, in front of the legislature. But, you know, if you, if you just don't want the, the taxes to increase, then you have to look at the other side of the, uh, right. uh, of the ledger and you have to say, okay, well, how can we save some money? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the d drug enforcement is, a, is an example. You know, it's not going to change overnight, but if we start investing now in our youth, Eventually, we're not going to have to build many prisons. We're going to be able to spend that money. We're not going to have to spend as much money on, on drug treatment programs, right. uh, rescue programs for people who are... The court are, system. You know, the court system and, and the whole work. So we've got to start somewhere. You know, it's the same way with our education system. You know, our education, you know, uh, we have some schools that are doing a great job. We have some schools that maybe need some work. Um, let's, let's look at one other area. Let's look at Wilmington and look at the crime rate, the murder rate in Wilmington. You know, the way to restore that community is first thing you, you need uh, to have safe streets. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have safe streets, businesses are going to come back in. They're going to provide jobs. But if businesses located there now are afraid that they're going to be uh, become a victim right. of a crime, they're not going to move in, into the city. So if we can fix that part of it, Get the streets the streets safe in Wilmington. Get the businesses back in there. We'll provide the jobs. But then we have to also concentrate very much on the education system too, to make sure that the kids are prepared when they get out of school yes. for uh, gainful employment and ability to make decisions. A ab absolutely. All right. So, you're a newspaper man. Yes, sir. And um, how's that going? It's it's good. Good. How long have you been in the newspaper business? Um, since the seventies. Really? Yeah, I started. And do you as a reporter. write or do you just? Uh, well, right now, manage uh, it after, or? after I was elected, I okay. took my hands off the operation. Okay. I appointed uh, someone that was had been working for the organization for a while, made him publisher. Okay. I took my hands off. He put his How hands on. How hard was on. that? 
not difficult at all. Was it difficult? Because okay. I, you know, being in the newspaper business, you you kind of absorb what's going on from the sidelines. Okay. Okay. Now now I'm in the game. Now I'm making. I'm, I'm voting on issues. I'm mm -hmm. I'm recommended some changes and so forth. Uh, so it's it's not a it's it's a lot different from just observing to to participating, but uh, it's something I have a passion for. Right now in Delaware, we have a one one party rule. We have a Democrat governor and a majority in the House and the Senate. There is some across the aisle dialogue now that uh, when I was elected, we broke up the supermajority. When Anthony Del Cola was elected, we our numbers came rose to ten. Okay. Uh, several years ago, we only had five Republicans. So you couldn't even have a conversation in in the Senate. Well, we could have a like a little tea or something like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, but what our ideas didn't affect change. Okay. Our ideas are starting to affect change now because they need our votes on certain issues. The bond bill can't pass uh, without uh, Republican votes. Okay. So there is some across the aisle dialogue, and I think it's improving the way that the state of Delaware operates. You know, the $47 million that's being set aside this year, I think, is a result of the fact that uh, the Republicans are starting to have an influence. We have a federal really? income tax now that started, and the way it was sold to the, the American people and to the states was it will be 1%. 1%. I mean, you know, it's just chump change, you know. Send it across uh, into Washington, D.C. They'll take care of national defense and, and a few other things, highways and a, and a few other things. But now we're, we're spending a, sending a lot more money to Washington, D.C. They're sending it back to the states with mandates. Right. So they are controlling the states when the states should have more autonomy. And these decisions, if, I would love to see us cut back on the money going into D.C. and keep more of the money here, so that we can make decisions without those mandates. I agree with that. The difference between free enterprise and the uh, the government is, uh, in free enterprise, if you have a good idea, it's successful. If you have a bad idea, like your business, right. you know, it succeeds. It's been succeeding for a number of decades now. A, a bad idea, a bad business idea falls mm -hmm. and goes away. But in government, bad government programs get subsidized. Right. More money gets thrown at them because, oh, they, what they say is uh, we don't have enough money. You know, we could do a better job. We just had, uh, you know, right. some, some more money. Give us a few more million dollars. We'll get better results when we need to really measure those results mm -hmm. and make sure, you know, I think it was Reagan that says the uh, th closest thing to immortality is a government program. So, yeah. Uh, wow. With that, I think I probably need to get out here. And All right. Well, thanks a lot. I'd like to have you on again sometime. All right.